Hello everyone, welcome to the third Spear Center of the fall 2022 semester. I am your host, Carlos Reyes. And I am Tyler Castillo. Last Friday, SJSU football player Camden McWright passed away tragically while on his way to an early morning workout at the age of 18. Before coming to San Jose State, he was a standout at St. Genevieve High in Panorama City, California. A two-sport athlete, McWright lettered in football as well as track and field and was crowned champion of the Santa Fe Track League in the 100 and 200 meter relay. He was a football team captain his junior and senior seasons and was named Camino League MVP twice, as well as getting the nod for CalHighSports.com first team All-State as a multi-purpose player. The football team, staff, and the entire SJSU community has felt this horrible tragedy and the Spear staff offers its deepest condolences to the McWright family. Now Gerardo joins Carlos in studio to take a look at soccer. The San Jose State men's soccer team took the field Friday night as he hosted a California Baptist. While all players wore black armbands in memory of their fellow peer, there was also a moment of silence before the match started. It was a match that was physical as both teams moved the ball well and players went all in for every challenge. Senior goalkeeper David Sweeney had two magnificent saves in the first half in which kept the Spartans alive and the game tied at zero. However, in the 32nd minute, a corner kick was given in favor of Kel Baptist, in which David Cordes headed it in to put the Lancers ahead 1-0. In the second half, San Jose State were able to create more opportunities and chances at goal with six shots. The Spartans came close in the last five minutes of the game as sophomore midfielder Val LaRue had a clear shot inside the box that just skinned the post as the ball went out. The ref blew his final whistle minutes after as San Jose State would lose at home 1-0. Yeah, it wasn't the result we want, but um, as everyone knows, we're in a slightly different place tonight. Well, I certainly am, and uh, our hearts, uh, our thoughts going out to, to Camden's family, um, all the football players, the staff. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another week of soccer. I'm your host, Carlos Reyes, and I'm joined by Gerardo Gonzalez, men's soccer beat reporter. Gerardo. Thanks for having me. We're here talking about some soccer. So, uh, Gerardo, um, men's soccer is currently in a good position uh, heading into playoffs. Yeah. Uh, they got on a good amount of, you know, a string of games recently. Uh, what are some of the key highlights for you uh, within these past couple games? Yeah, so some key highlights for the men's soccer team right now is that they're 4-1-1 in conference in the WAC. And before this past weekend, they were unbeaten in seven games, and they had a four-win win streak so far in the season, which is their longest win streak. And they've been playing some excellent soccer, I believe, and from defense to attacking, and of course, with um, spectacular saves by senior goalkeeper David Sweeney, who has made lots of saves and has five clean sheets at the moment. And he leads also the conference in, in shutouts, so it's a pretty good you know, team, and so far, they found the rhythm going into be much playoffs in a couple of weeks. Definitely, and, and we talked about uh, last week about Bolero and just his overall capacity to drive this team forward in the midfield. Uh, many could say that he's the engine of the team. Yeah. He's been certainly stepping up in these past couple games. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about him. Yeah, uh, Bolero, he's, uh, like you said, the engine in the midfield, and I believe he's a playmaker that moves the ball around from defense position to the attacking side, and he has seven goals and he leads the team in goal scoring. So he's found his, um, his pace, his rhythm as well. And I mean, I, we'll see if he can score more goals. I think he has a chance to maybe become top goal scorer. I believe 10 is the leading scorer right now in the conference. So he's three off of it right now. So hopefully he can score a couple more goals before the season ends. Yeah, definitely that's, that's something that he's on pace towards. And it's something that you really appreciate within a midfielder, uh, the creativity within the midfield to be yeah. able to distribute the ball as well as be able to find the back of the net. is something that you could admire a lot. Um, they're heading into a tough matchup against the Air Force this upcoming week. Uh, what are some key highlights or some, some key details that the team needs to solidify on uh, as far as pursuing the win against Air Force? Yeah, like I said, it's a key matchup, I believe, this Friday against Air Force. Air Force currently leads the conference in first place. They're unbeaten in conference as well. And so it's going to be a tough um, on-the-road match as well. So it sounds like State needs to basically 
you know, step up and show their A game if they want to have a chance to maybe get that, secure that top spot. Because if they can beat Air Force this Friday, they have a chance of um, securing that first place. Of course, they have to win out, and Air Force has to lose one more game. But it's possible. Anything is possible in soccer. Definitely a, a big statement win if they're able to pull it off. Yeah. Uh, now moving on to women's soccer, Gerardo. A little bit you could tell me about them. Yeah, so women's soccer, they are currently 6-6-5 six, six, overall and 5-3-2 and two in conference in the Mountain West. And they had three straight wins, which is the longest winning streak. And they lost this past Sunday on the road against Wyoming. But I believe that before that, they had a pretty good winning streak. And they won some games on the road as well as home, which was a key. I believe you mentioned it in the past Beer Center that needed to find that sweet spot and get those three points as much as possible, which they did. And many of them were one score games. So it's, um, it shows like what kind of team they are and they found the rhythm. So, I mean, having that once close score games, basically, what do you think about their position players? I definitely believe that, you know, Bente Perno has stepped up and taken command of this defense. Uh, you know, as soccer uh, fans, we realize that the presence of a goalkeeper in that net is really important as far as positioning players, you know, keeping the ball out of the net specifically. Yeah. Bente has, it's her second time winning Freshman of the Week for the WAC really this, this season, which is incredibly yeah. impressive. So it just shows that she's not afraid to step into the limelight, take charge, and you know we mentioned a lot of a lot of these games have been really close, uh, games that come within a goal uh, of being decided. How important is a goalkeeper in those moments, uh, moments, Gerardo, when it comes to sealing the win and establishing yourself as an overall presence in the defense? How, how important is it to be a goalkeeper? I believe the goalkeeper position is pretty much um, it's difficult one and. I think that it's very important because basically it's important to keep shutouts and it's also important to basically show that solidarity in the back line. So when the team has that solidarity in the back line and they can rely on their goalkeeper and shutouts or just magnificent saves throughout the games, and especially when games come that close and you have to rely on a goalkeeper because maybe your attacking players can't you know, finish a one-on-one -on -one or maybe there's a mishap in the midfield. You know, uh, goalkeepers, you know, step up and Bennett per Perno basically has that, has that uh, talent in her. Yeah, San Jose State is definitely very lucky to have Bennett Perno. Uh, that is all for us today. Uh, we look forward to more men and women soccer heading into playoffs. Follow Soccer Beat reporter Gerardo Gonzalez on Twitter, GerardoG209, for more SJSU men's soccer. Now we turn to Aiden Bostic and Aitman Fang for volleyball. SJSU women's volleyball has been dominating in conference play and nearly went an entire month without losing a single conference match. The Spartans took their first conference loss this past Thursday against UNLV to drop to 15-5 and 9-1 and and in conference play. It was a showdown of the two best teams in the Mountain West and SJSU came into the match on a nine-game winning streak while UNLV came into the match on an eight-game winning streak. Despite the loss, SJSU was aggressive and they won the first set 32-30. The Spartans could not secure the next three sets, but in the fourth and final set, it was highly contested with UNLV ultimately winning 39-37. Redshirt sophomore Blair Fleming tied with UNLV's Isabel Martin for most kills in the game with 20. It was the first time a Spartan has recorded 20 or more kills this season. Fifth-year libero Sarah Smivog was the dig leader for the game with an astounding 24 digs. SJSU competed down to the wire, and although they took their first Mountain West loss of the season, it was against a formidable opponent. The Spartans gear up to face Air Force on Thursday, who they beat 3-0 earlier this month. I'm here with volleyball reporter Aikman Fang to talk about the UNLV game and kind of what the volleyball team has to look forward to in the next couple games. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So first, um, let's talk about the UNLV game. It was intense. We had that crazy final set. Um, what are some key stats that kind of popped out to you over that game? First, it was a battle between the two best teams in the Mountain West, and it did not disappoint. Going back to that last set, it required 11 lead changes and 19 ties to decide a winner. San Jose State earned six opportunities to win that set and extend that match to a fifth set. Unfortunately, UNLV prevailed, but UNLV required its ninth match point to finish the job. I think we need to give the Spartans a lot of credit. 
especially not just Blair Fleming, Sarah Smivog, but there's a couple other Spartans that did a great job extending that set close to a record-breaking set. The final score of the fourth set was 39 to 37, and I believe the record is 46-44 this season, so it was very close. Yeah, no, definitely, and it, was, it wasn't a, a loss that, you know, they weren't getting blown out. It, they, they took it down to the wire. Um, and then from there, what do we have to look forward to kind of in these next couple games? I know we play Air Force, we have a New Mexico game. What do you think is going to happen in these next couple games this week? The San Jose State Spartans are going to continue this road trip and they're going to head off to Air Force where they hit a season best hitting percentage. But after that, they continue that road trip and go down to New Mexico where similar to Air Force, they beat the New Mexico Lobos in a three set sweep earlier this month. I think the Spartans are going to continue their dominance in the Mountain West Conference and it's going to be really exciting what they can do as they come back on Thursday um, to, to play Colorado State. Yeah, definitely. Still 9-1 and one in conference, and um, they're just gearing up for more conference wins. And then um, kind of we could backtrack a little bit. Blair Fleming and Sarah Smivog both uh, won Mountain West awards this year. They're both dominating in play. Um, even to the New Mexico game, um, how do you see their play kind of being pivotal to what the team's doing right now? First, I want to focus on Blair Fleming. She's a redshirt sophomore, so she still has a couple more years of eligibility. I'm very excited what she can do here at San Jose State, considering that she's still young, she still has a lot of time. Uh, but also Sarah Smivok, she has won the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Week three times already, and most likely she'll probably win the award another couple of times, considering how dominant our blockers have been and have allowed her these opportunities to get digs. Yeah, definitely. And then, um, so the Spartans return home uh, after these next two games this week to face Colorado next Thursday at 6 p.m. Hopefully they pull out three conference wins back to back. We'll see how it goes. That's all for volleyball. Thank you for coming here, Aikman. Thank you. And back to you. Thanks, Aiden. Keep an eye out for magazine stands scattered across campus and at Dwight Bennett Hall to secure your copy of the Spear magazine. This magazine represents about a month of hard work from us at the Spear, so make sure to check it out. That's a wrap here for us here at Spear Center. Be sure to follow at the Spear SJSU for all things SJSU sports related. For the Spear, I am Tyler Castillo. And I'm Carlos Reyes. Thank you and go Spartans.